Welcome to the F5 Networks Advanced Web Application Firewall Demo Series. In this demo, we'll show how we can block several cross site scripting attacks using Big IP Advanced Web. F5 Networks Industry Leading Web Application Firewall. This is Demo 3 of the A Web Demo Series, and it's intended for users that are new to Big IP Advanced Web. For optimal viewing, we recommend using full screen mode. The environment for this demo contains three devices. A Windows workstation will be used to launch several different cross-site scripting attacks. These requests will arrive at the F5 Big IP system, running Advanced WEF. The Big IP system sits in front of, and protects, the backend web application. The Big IP system, using its full proxy architecture, examines every request, and can block all malicious requests and prevent them from going to the backend web servers. Let's start by attempting several cross-site scripting attacks targeting the web server. Cross-site scripting attacks enable users to exploit user input fields by inserting scripts that can perform any number of functions. We'll use the damn vulnerable web application, or DVWA for short. First, we'll attempt to submit a malicious cross-site script into the username field. Although the login failed, we were not blocked, meaning this user input field is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. We'll now log in with a valid user account, owned by a malicious user. Let's try and exploit the user input field on this web page. This cross-site script uses the alert command to create a dialog box, which can display whatever text the malicious user wants it to say. We'll log into the web application as a regular, non-malicious user, and open the same page. Notice we are presented with the same dialog box. The malicious user can make a dialog box appear for all users of a web application, displaying whatever text they like. Let's try another cross-site script in this field. This attack uses an iframe script. An iframe script can be used to place a frame of another web page, onto the current web page. When the non-malicious user opens this web page, They now see this second web page displayed within their web page, which in this case makes it appear that they have a virus on their computer. Both of these cross site scripts were inserted into the application database. Because of that, all valid website users will see the results of the scripts. This next attack is a cross site script that has been encoded. This is a common method malicious users utilize to evade signature based detection. To prepare for the last cross site scripting attack, we'll first clear the previous three entries from the DVWA database. As the malicious user, we'll now add a cross site script that uses the window location command. When we access this page as the non-malicious user, we're now immediately redirected to what appears to be a command line, but is actually just a web page that's meant to fool the victim. Using cross-site scripting, a malicious user can force anything they can write in a script, into the web form field. Now, let's protect the web application. First, We'll take a look at the virtual server we were just using to access the DVWA website. This is a standard HTTP virtual server that listens on 10.1.10.35. Note that this virtual server contains the default HTTP profile. An HTTP profile is required to protect against application layer attacks. Next, 
will create a big IP advanced WEF security policy to protect the virtual server. There are only a couple of pieces of information needed to create a security policy. A name. The template type. Which for this policy will be rapid deployment. And the virtual server we're protecting. We'll also put the security policy into blocking mode. And disable signature staging. That's all it takes to create a basic security policy with Big IP Advanced WEF. Rapid deployment includes several common security measures and includes thousands of attack signatures. Now, let's try the cross site scripting attacks again. We'll try exploiting the username field. This cross site scripting attempt is now blocked by the Big IP Advanced WEF security policy. Let's try to exploit the user input field on this web page. The malicious request is also blocked by Big IP Advanced WEF. Let's try the iframe script. This is also blocked by Big IP Advanced WEF. Let's attempt to use the encoded cross site script. Even though it's encoded, the Big IP Advanced WEF security policy was able to block this malicious attack. Let's try one more field using a new cross site script. This one using the window on load command. Using a big IP advanced WEF security policy that took just seconds to create, all user input fields on our web application are now fully protected against cross site scripting attacks. Let's view the big IP advanced WEF event log. First, We'll filter the log files to view only blocked log entries. We can examine each log entry to get several pieces of information about the malicious requests and why they were blocked. This request was blocked because it matched an attack signature. Notice we can see the parameter that was attacked and the value that was input by the malicious user. We can also view the violation rating and attack type. This request was a cross-site scripting attack. Big IP Advanced WEF includes descriptions of the different application attack types. This request matched two attack signatures on the name parameter. This request matched one attack signature, which was the iframe tag signature. The last request matched three attack signatures. Notice in the decoded request section that Big IP Advanced WEF was able to decode the encoded request, which enabled it to then detect that it contained a cross site script attack signature. Thank you for watching this demonstration on how F5 Big IP Advanced WEF can quickly protect all user input fields on a web application from cross site scripting attacks. We encourage you to watch additional AWEF demos, and for more details on how Advanced WEF can protect your web applications, contact your F5 Networks Sales Account Manager. For questions or comments about this video, contact Chris Manley at the email address at the bottom of the page.